Yo, what's up everybody? Moving on to the next example, we have to find the equation of a line that passes through the point 8 and 0 and is perpendicular to the tangent of f of x equals the square root of 25 minus x squared at an x value of 4. Now, this question is one of the most difficult questions you can probably run into in this section. So if you can get through this question well and understand it all, then you're in a pretty good place. My suggestion maybe is to pause the video and try to work the question yourself. Try to make sense of it before watching. Maybe use the previous videos as a guideline and try to solve it yourself and then check your solution by seeing what I do in this video. So let's read the question again one more time carefully. Find the equation of the line so we know that our final answer is going to be in this form. And we know that this line is passing through the point 8 and 0. And this line is also perpendicular to the tangent on this function at an x value of 4. So if we can find the slope of the tangent for this function at an x value of 0, and then we can find the perpendicular slope, that would be the slope of this line. And then once we have the m value, we have a point, we can solve for that b value. Let me show you visually how this works. So if we take this function and graph it, it's sort of tough to see how this graph would look like just by looking at the function. So perhaps put it in Desmos or you would make a table of values, but basically it's a semicircle and the intercepts, the x-intercepts are at negative 5 and positive 5 and then the y-intercept here is at positive 5 as well. So the radius of the semicircle is 5. At an x value of 4, which is here, the tangent on this function would look something like this. But we're told that the line that we're finding is going to be perpendicular to this tangent, meaning a perpendicular line to the tangent looks something like this, where this is a 90 degree angle. So we know that our line is going to have the same slope as this a perpendicular line sticking out of the tangent. This line is also called the normal. Now in addition to the line that we're finding being parallel to this perpendicular line here, we're also told that it goes to the point 8 and 0. And 8 and 0 is here. So what's going to happen is we have a line that's going to be parallel to this line and it's going to go through this point here. So the line that we're finding, the equational line, is going to look something like this. So not the best drawing, but it goes through the point 8 and 0, and it's also parallel to that perpendicular line of the tangent on this function at an x value of 4. Hopefully you got all that. Perhaps maybe rewatch that part one more time. So the first step to find the equation of this line is let's find the slope of the tangent on this function at an x value of 4. Let's find what the slope of this line here is. And to do that, we would use the difference quotient and we're going to do it at a specific a value. Now another way you can do it is first find the general slope equation. So just put a here instead of 4 and then simplify, get a general slope equation and then plug in uh, 4 for a to get that specific slope. However, we've been doing that a lot, so I'm going to do a little practice in terms of finding the slope of the tangent right away. So instead of putting an a value, I put a 4 right away. So then plugging in 4 plus h into the x value for the function, we would get the square root of 25 minus bracket 4 plus h squared. So this here represents f of 4 plus h minus f of 4. If we plug in 4 for x, we will get 25 minus 16, which is 9, and then the square root of 9 is just 3. And this is still all over h. Now, because we're dealing with a radical and we have to get rid of this h in the denominator, hopefully by this point you can tell that we're going to have to rationalize this. But before we rationalize this, let's simplify what's under the radical here, under the square root. So then taking that 4 plus h squared and then foiling it out, in the bracket we would be left with 16 plus 8h plus h squared and then we're still subtracting this 3 on the outside. All of this is still all over h. So then distributing that negative inside and then simplifying, 
we would end up with the limit as h goes to zero of the square root of nine minus eight h minus h squared minus three all over h. And now we can get into rationalizing the numerator and then hopefully things will cancel out after we rationalize it and the h will cancel out in the denominator. So this here is a two term radical. So this here is the first term and then this three here is the second term. So we have to find the conjugate of that two term expression right there. And the conjugate of those two terms would just basically be those two terms written out again, except the sign in the middle changes. It becomes plus three. And notice how we didn't change any signs in the radicals, though the radicals stay the same, nine minus eight h minus h squared. You don't change the terms on the end, you just change the sign that's in the middle of those terms. So be careful with that. A lot of students sometimes will start changing stuff in this radical, but you don't do that. So multiplying it by the conjugate over the same conjugate is like taking this expression and multiplying it by one. So then taking the two numerators and multiplying them, because we're taking a two term expression and multiplying it by its conjugate, we just have to multiply the first terms together, which would give us nine minus eight h minus h squared, basically the square roots would go away. And then negative three times positive three gives us negative nine. And then the two terms in the bottom, we'll keep them separate. So we got this h here, that was this term, keep it in brackets. And then this whole term here, the square root of nine minus eight h minus h squared plus three, we'll keep that separated as well in a, another bracket. And then continuing this on up here, notice how the nines in the numerator will cancel out. So in the numerator, we'll just be left with negative eight h minus h squared and then the denominator stays the same. But now notice in the numerator how all the expressions contain an h, and now we can factor out an h. And now these h's here would cancel out, and now we can plug in zero for h, and it won't be undefined because we got rid of that h in the denominator. So this h here would go to zero, and then this h here would go to zero and this expression would go to zero. So we would be left with the uh, negative eight in the numerator and then we'll have the square root of nine here which is three and then three plus three is six. So negative eight over six, that simplifies to negative four over three. So that there represents the slope of the tangent, this line here, at an x value of four. And that makes sense because the slope is negative and notice how this line here is pointing down when we read from left to right. So it makes sense that the slope would be negative because on the diagram, the tangent has a negative slope as well. Now, once we have the slope of that tangent, the next step is we have to find the perpendicular slope because we're trying to find the slope of the perpendicular line here because we know that our line in red here is going to be parallel to that perpendicular line. It's going to have the same slope. So if you remember, a perpendicular slope is basically a slope with a negative reciprocal to the slope that it's perpendicular to. So we take this negative four over three and then we find the negative reciprocal of it. Well, that would just be three over four. So we know that this line here has a slope of three over four. And that means that our line, this red line here, also has a slope of three over four. And now that we have the slope of our line and a point it goes through, this eight and zero, we can smoothly find the equation of it. And so our third and final step is we have to find the equation of this line. So it's gonna be in y equals mx plus b form. We know the m value or the slope is three over four. So we can write y equals three over four x plus b. And now to solve for that b value, we can plug in our coordinate eight and zero. So we would plug in zero for y, and then we would plug in eight for x, and that's plus b, and we can now isolate for b. Three over four times eight, that just gives us six, and we're still adding that b. So we know that b is equal to negative six. If we bring this six over to the left side, it becomes negative six. 
So our final equation, our final answer is y equals 3 over 4x minus 6. So that there is our final answer. And it also makes sense. So negative 6 would be the y-intercept of that line. If we extend this line, it makes sense that it would go through a y-value of negative 6 if we were to extend this axis. So anyways, that's our final answer, y equals 3 over 4x minus 6. So pretty complex question, a lot going on. I think the uh, drawing the diagram, it's perhaps tough with uh, seeing it in this format because we sort of have like this quadratic within a radical. So it's not a normal radical function, but it's just a semicircle. And if you can understand what's going on here, the steps become pretty easy. There's some complex algebra going on. We had to rationalize this two-term radical, but overall it's not too bad. So again, as I mentioned, this is one of the toughest questions that you'll get in this section. So if you didn't get all of it, make sure you rewatch the video again, let it really sink in. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.